Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to have a wee boo at compliant structures. This itch got scratched, of course, by that handsome hair suit young fella. What uh, has a pension for big black balls. Yeah, various tasium. I, I knew it's not hair suit, it's her suit, but hair suit is far more evocative. He did a video on these compliant structures, kind of a breathless, dude perfect, you know, a pop sigh kind of video about... Um, Colin Powell's undercooked brother from another mother at Brigham Young University. Larry Powell, Professor Larry Powell, had made these compliance structures. A very interesting concept in order, instead of taking structures what have pins and bushings and so forth, you just print the Jesus thing out. Now, of course, all the while this is going on, we're watching the video, you know, we harken back to stuff like this. Yours. This is not new technology compliant mechanisms, not even remotely new technology. However, one thing that interested me was the geometry. Is it possible to just do some cut and pastry of the geometry to make usable structures rather than all the research, you know, on the shoulders of giants and so forth? I ain't at Brigham Young University and it's as witnessed to the, um, the miraculous nature of the Almighty, Brigham Young not only able to uh, service the needs of his 55 wives, but also found the time to found a university, no less. Miraculous. So, friends in low places stole from the thingiverse, uh, the thing that uh, Mr. Larry Powell made, or with probably some help from his friends in low places, that compliance uh, oliphant w with the thing. And I thought, well, what's better than an oliphant? 200 pound gorilla busting a nut. So <laughs> here we have it. And the question, of course, on the Veristasium one was, um, which direction is this, is this thing gonna move when you push it? And you think to yourself, well, the thing is it doesn't move, it just twists. And we took that same geometry and just swapped it around and she works like a hot damn. Look at that gorilla, just a fucking reefing on that nut. Reminds me of my last Saturday night. Okay, so the thing is, the material is critical for this application. When you, when you think of a pin and a bushing and, and a bearing and so forth, it's not that critical, the material, so long as it, it can withstand, uh, you know, the forces involved. In this case, it's critical because it needs to be compliant enough. So what I did was I, I figured, well, we'll take that STL and we'll just extrude it and we'll put it in the Fusion 360, give her a couple curses, some clacks, beep boop, Bob's your auntie. Doesn't work because the metal structure is not as compliant. It doesn't have the, um, the elasticity, the compliance of the plastique. So then what we did was we made these even thinner and made the body thicker to see if, if we could get it to comply. And essentially, she went half a turn and let the smoke out. Broke right half in two. I just wanted to share with you my results because this was super interesting to me, these compliant structures in novel forms. However, uh, other than printing them out on a 3D printer, if you're gonna try and machine them out of metal for some unforeseen uh, you know, some novel invention or something like that. And the reason I, I initially got into this as well, really got into it, is because when you're underground, you're mining underground, you want the drifts to be as small as possible. And when you, when you don't have compliant structures, I was thinking that compliant structures would be able to fold down smaller and fit through smaller drifts. If you remove less material, it's less costly to mine. You get uh, more profit and you different resources are more economic that way so just thinking of different joints and one of the things what was interesting was that these joints don't wear out or have very high cycles before they fail or are unreliable but in this case when we're actually into metal we see they are extremely unreliable. So what we would need to do for the next iteration, if we were interested, we would need to lengthen these by a lot in order to get the movement out of it. I just thought that was kind of 
quick, fast, in a hurry, interesting, and uh, I'll stick this 200 pound nut busting gorilla up on the thingy verse there. If and you're interested, you put your name, you know, whatever you want, impress your friend, lady friends at the uh, auxiliary. Spanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Yeah, my Lebonic let me down. It's not, it's not uh, Mr. Power, Dr. Powell. It's Dr. Howell. That's, you know, physical trait. You, you can't identify anyone by a physical trait. He's not undercooked because of his fair complexion. He's a uh, professor. He, his name hasn't transmorgified from H to P. Needs more time. That was a terrible mnemonic. I would have been better off with uh, something like Colin Powell's howling brother, Larry Howell, or Howell. Yeah, that would have been better. And it's just a game you can play with yourself. Instead of writing down a name when you read the name and you want to retain it, you make up a little story. That way you don't need a pen, you don't need a pen. It works. But then it's stuck in your fucking head. Unless you get it wrong and then you look like an asshole. Okay, so the other thing is Veristasium. Uh, check out his Vigeo. Uh, very good uh, science educator type. You know, we, we like to keep the rent down low here. He, he's uh, quite a bit higher, what would you say that? Higher uh, production values. You know, we gotta, gotta appeal. He, he's got some numbers to hit, so he has to appeal to more people. Whereas uh, we, we don't give a fuck. You wanna check out his initial Vigeo.